In this episode, we will see about the LNG regasification, properties of LNG and the usage of LNG. Normally, the unit used in the LNG is MMSF SCFD, that is million standard cubic feet per uh, feet of gas per day. One mm, one mm SCFD at a standard temperature, 15 degree centigrade is 1177.17 meter cube per hour or 0 0.32 774128 meter cube per second. LNG, liquefied natural gas, mainly consists of methane and small quantity of ethane, CH4 methane and C2H6. This liquid is colorless, odorless, is non-toxic and non-corrosive liquid. LNG is a very clear liquid and it is not toxic and it is not corrosive. The boiling point of LNG is minus 160 degree centigrade or 261 degree Fahrenheit. The liquid density of the LNG is 426 kg per meter cube or 26.5943 pounds per feet cube. The natural gas density is 0.656 kg per meter cube or 0.04095 pounds per feet cube. The specific gravity of LNG is 0.554. The lower exposure limit of LNG or gas NG is 5%, upper exposure limit is 15%. The auto ignition temperature is 595 degree centigrade or 1103 degree Fahrenheit. The auto ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which the fuel will spontaneously ignite in a normal atmosphere without an external source. It is applicable for the natural gas only. When the gas is heated to 595 degree centigrade, it will ignite automatically without any external source, without any heating source, uh, that is any ignition source, it will ignite. So the hot ignition temperature of natural gas is 595 degree centigrade. Now you can see the usage of LNG. LNG is used in many fields. It is used in dairy products, manufacturing industries, food processing industry, plastic industry and construction products. It is mainly used in power plant to produce power and boilers and it is used in some furnace in the industries. It is also an alternative fuel for diesel, for a heavy truck. Now we can see the expansion ratio of the LNG. Expansion ratio of LNG is that is one meter cube of liquid is expanded, that is heated or regasified. We can get 600 meter cube of natural gas. And you can store LNG easily. LNG can be stored at very low pressure of 10 kilopascal, that is 0 0.01 bar in a cryogenic tank. Now we can see the LNG value chain or LNG routing. LNG value chain is the first is the step how LNG is uh, produced and uh, it is uh, transported and used. First step is LNG exploration. LNG is available either as wet gas or as dry gas that is explored by drilling either in land or in sea. After exploring uh, LNG, whether it is wet gas, it will come along with the crude oil. It is dry gas only, gas only is coming. The next step is the production. Now for production, we have to remove the impurities. Impurities like hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, water, mercury and other impurities. These are all removed in the production plant. Acid gas removal plant, uh, hydrogen sulfide and CO2 is removed. Then it is followed by the moisture separator. Uh, there where uh, water is removed and mercury separator unit where mercury is removed and other impurities also removed uh, in the separators then it is sent to this into sent to distillation section and where uh, methane and ethane is separated and sent to liquefaction step is third step is liquefaction lighter hydrocarbon from the deethanizer is sent to liqu liquefied uh, cryogenic column where it is liquefied at uh, minus 161 to minus 160 centigrade temperature. In the cryogenic column, the methane and ethane is liquefied and LNG is produced. Now we can see the transportation of LNG. LNG can be transported easily. The transportation that is shipping can be done easily either through ships or through trains or through trucks. So transportation of LNG is very easy as it is not flammable in the liquid condition, very safe to transport. The next step is uh, storage. LNG can be unloaded in the unloading area or in the platform or 
in a storage facilities and it can be stored in a cryogenic tank since the temperature is minus 163 but we can keep it in a atmospheric pressure or low pressure as 0 0.01 bar so the lng can be unloaded and can be stored in the cryogenic tank for further usage the next step is regasification and refrigeration regasification is done in the answer facilities or in the uh, in the fsu or fsru itself where it's floating storage and regasification unit if it is in the ship itself that is done by the heat exchanger either by heating media of sea water or uh, glycol solutions then after regasification the gas is distributed to the customer the regas fed natural gas is uh, distributed to the customer directly or to reduce the calorific value it is mixed with nitrogen gas in the metering section after reducing the calorific value then it is sent to the customer to use in the furnace so regasification and distribution can be done easily after uh, sending to regasification unit now we can see the lng regasification by using sea water in the open rack vaporizer lng regasification is done either with sea water in open rack vaporizer or with ethylene glycol liquid in shell and tube heat exchanger normally boil up gas is produced in the lng handling system whether it is in a pipeline or in a storage vessel boil up gas is produced the boil up gas produced is controlled either by wasting the gas through flaring or it can be reused by condensing it in a recondenser. The continuously produced boil up gas vapor, that is VOG vapor, will be either routed to recondenser where some quantity of LNG liquid itself is used to condense the vapor back to LNG liquid and the LNG is required or reused in the system or the VOG is sent to flaring. So LNG, BOG, LNG liquid is uh, used effectively by recondensing the BOG vapors and reused. The LNG liquid will be sent to the heat exchanger through the high pressure booster pump because it is uh, easy to use uh, natural gas in a compressing area. So LNG is pumped through booster pump to 80 to 90 bar then it is sent to open track vaporizer open track vaporizer is where sea water is used it is sea water is sent from top to bottom through the over the tube racks the tube rack is uh, made of uh, aluminum alloy inside the uh, aluminum alloy tube lng liquid is flowed from bottom to top it is a liquid flow flowing from the bottom to top inside the tube and the uh, heat exchanger is heat exchange is done by the counter current flow that is sea water is flowing from the top over the tube and lng liquid is flowing inside the tube from bottom to top the lng liquid is then converted to natural gas at 5 to 10 degrees centigrade you can get the natural gas at high pressure maybe the pressure will get reduced a little bit and we'll get it at a 5 to 10 bars in 10 degrees centigrade the natural gas is then sent to onshore facility or uh, meter injection either to distribute directly to the customer or mix with nitrogen to reduce calorific value to use in furnace and then sent to the customer normally ORV is used to over other ice exchanger because it is cheap and best normally it is used in gulf area and in ship whether it is in the fsru in that facility only ORV is used where sea water is abundantly available the material of construction of the tubes are aluminum alloy to avoid the sea water corrosion now we can see the schematic diagram of open rack vaporizer this is the open rack vaporizer from the top view this is side view and uh, either it is in a uh, fsru or in a uh, offshore plant normally lng is admitted at the bottom of the open rack vaporizer these tubes are made of uh, aluminum alloy lng is flowing inside the tube from bottom to top and the sea water is admitted from the top over the tubes 
that is both over the tubes from the top to the trough sea water is flowing from top to bottom and is sent to sea back sent back to sea now the lng liquid is converted to gas this flow is a counter current because sea water is coming from top and lng is from bottom to top so it is a natural gas is collected and evaporated and the gas is sent to the on floor facilities for further uh, treatment or further uh, sending out now we can see the second method lng regasification is done in the sealant tube vaporizer stv ethylene glycol monoethylene glycol or monopropylene glycol is used in the stv as a heating media if ethylene glycol is used as heating media in the sealant tube heat exchanger or lng is sent in tubes from bottom to top and the glycol water ethylene glycol is in cell site to avoid freezing or ice formation 40% of meg or 40% of mpg and 60% of dm water or raw water is used here normally dm water is used to avoid corrosion dm water is mixed with uh, meg and water ethylene glycol is uh, used as heating media to reduce the freezing point of the weg to 550 to minus 60 degrees centigrade so during heat exchanging weg temperature will come down so it should not get uh, frozen or ice formation should not be there so it is uh, water is mixed with uh, ethylene glycol so weg is used as heating media in the stv WEG is used to vaporize the LNG to convert it into NG. The sealant tube vaporizer STV tubes are normally vertically mounted to avoid freezing of heating media that is water ethylene glycol. It is a closed circuit. The WEG is admitted two ways uh, from top to bottom in a counter current method and LNG is from bottom to top. to avoid ice formation initially little bit of uh, wg is diverted and is sent as a co current so two way it is sent L lng is going from bottom to top and a little portion of uh, wg is also admitted co currently in the sealant tube exchanger and remaining portion maximum portion is admitted from top to bottom to heat the lng liquid an lng gas is converted into ng that ng will be coming out of the exchanger at 5 to 10 degrees centigrade and wg water ethylene glycol uh, at a low temperature it can be reheated with uh, ambient air heater or uh, it can be heat with a uh, hot flue gas from from uh, flue gas uh, from some uh, furnaces and the wg is circulated back for uh, next cycle natural gas is then sent to metering section and then to the dc percent grid before admitting to the scv normally as usual pressure pump is used and the lng is at high pressure and the ng at the pressure high pressure and the temperature 5 to 10 degrees centigrade is sent to the metering section or dc percent grid for uh, customer usage now we can see the main differences or advantage and disadvantages between liquefied natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas lng and lpg lng normally consists of methane mainly and a little bit of ethane or lpg is either propane based or butane based lpg propane or lpg butane or mixture of both the boiling point of lng is minus 160 degree centigrade uh, boiling point of lpg is minus 42 degree centigrade Now we can see the expansion ratio. One meter cube of LNG, when it is heated, we can get 600 meter cube of gas. Or when LNG is re-gasified, we can get 600 meter cube of gas, natural gas. Whereas LPG, one meter cube will be converted to 2 centimeter cube of petroleum gas. LNG cannot be used directly; it can be used only after re-gasification. Whereas LNG, LPG can be used straight away from the cylinder where it is stored. The next one is. Uh, LNG is a greenhouse gas. That is, it is when it is leaked, leaked as methane, it is very dangerous than CO2, and it will leads to global warming. Whereas LPG is not a greenhouse gas. Even when it is leaking, it will not affect the environment. 
The next one is LNB, LNG can be stored in a container or in vessel or in any storage vessel, cryogenic vessel at atmospheric pressure, even at a lower low pressure of less than 0.01 bar or 10 kilopascal. Whereas LPG is stored in cylinders a little bit higher pressure of 8 to 8.5 bar. Now we can see the cost. It's not cost effective at a low volume. LNG is not cheaper because when it is used for cooking or heating, in low volume it is costlier. Whereas LPG is cheaper when it is low volume or in a higher volume. Normally, LPG is used in, as cooking gas and it is replacement for petrol and it is used in vehicles like car, bus and uh, auto rickshaws and is a very clean gas. LNG also used as a fuel in a diesel vehicle. It is also clean green gas. Then we can see the heating value. Heating value of LNG is 38.7 mega megajoule per kg. Whereas the heating value of LPG which is higher it is 93.2 megajoule per kg. Now we can see the auto ignition temperature. Methane has an auto ignition temperature of, minus, uh, of 595 degrees centigrade or 1103 degree Fahrenheit. Whereas uh, propane has auto ignition temperature of 470 degree centigrade or 800 degree Fahrenheit. Now we can see the density, relative density of uh, LNG. LNG is lighter than air. It is uh, 0.5537 and when it is when it is leaking it is become uh, gas and it will go up so it is very safer than LPG. LPG is heavier than air because the relative density of LPG is 1.5219 so it will settle at the ground level so it is danger than LNG if any emission source is available it may catch fire so LPG is a little bit dangerous than the LNG when it is leaking. Now we can see the main usage. It is mainly used in power plant and in furnace as a fuel and it is a replacement fuel for a diesel vehicle. Whereas LPG is used in low volume or high volume as a cooking gas or replacement for petrol and diesel in a car, bus and auto rickshaw. Hope you might have understood about the LNG regasification, LNG usage, and the main difference between LNG and LPG. In the coming episode, I and Ramol from different media I will discuss. Do watch my video, like it, subscribe it, and share it. Thank you very much.